Hello everyone, I am Josh and welcome to this Sims 4 house building video. Now today I am building Goth Manor from The Sims 3, so technically it's a recreation, so what I did is I just looked at all the floor plans and the colors and everything from Goth, the Goth Manor in The Sims 3 and recreated it here in The Sims 4. Now if this footage right now looks a little weird, like it's kind of la a little laggy, it's not actually laggy, it's just because I kept pausing when I was building it to look at the pictures, so it does look a bit weird, but eventually um, that, that won't be happening once I get to the interior anyway. So this house is not of my design, it's pretty much the one from The Sims 3, floor plan wise and size wise, like, you know, I basically recreated all the sizes of it. All the interior furnishing though I pretty much did and the colors are a bit different. Obviously because The Sims 4 does not have creative style so you can't really replicate those colors. And a few things on the outside are different. I mean it's not, it's no way it could be an exact replica but I did my best. I thought it would be kind of interesting because I really think that the, I don't, it's not even called the Goth Manor in The Sims 4 but whatever they call it, um, I really don't like it. It's just an ugly house. Like the house that the Goths live in in The Sims 4. Yeah, so I thought this is a much nicer house. The one in The Sims 3 at least was nicer, so uh, I thought I'd recreate it. So it ends up having three bedrooms and three bathrooms, again, like the original, and four floors, although the fourth floor is not really much of a floor. It's just kind of like a little room on the top that you can use to walk out onto the roof if you want to. Now, the third floor is just an attic, so if you download the house, you can technically expand the third floor to have probably like a couple more bedrooms if you wanted to, but it doesn't actually have anything up there really, so you'll see that as we get to it. Now right now, that this is the third floor right now actually, so you can see a bit of a weird shape because it's under the roof, so you know, but it turns out pretty well. And there's the fourth floor, that little box at the top as you can see. So now I'm starting with the roofs, um, pretty simple roofing actually, I mean it's pretty much just the roof is there to hide the third floor there. A uh, little bit of a balcony there in the front off the master bedroom as you can see and I use a lot of roof trim and um, like freeze pieces and um, little columns on the corners to make it kind of look more realistic because again The Sims 3 didn't have those so the goth manor in The Sims 3 looked a little bland So like when I recreated it in The Sims 4 it did look a bit bland So I ended up adding a bunch of details to it which turned out really nicely so you'll see that uh, Right now I'm just adjusting it because I kind of messed up a bit and yes, yeah, so you can see the front there, as you can see, looks pretty much like the Goth Manor from The Sims 3 at this point. So you have that front bay window, and right now I'm just adding some balconies around. There's also a balcony over there. And that big room out the back is actually kind of weird. Uh, it's like a indoor garden space. I pretty much did that last, because I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. So, you know, I don't know what the purpose of that was in the original house, but it's here too, so... If you just want to go sit in some kind of indoor garden or whatever, you can do that. I mean, your Sims can do that. You're not really going to be able to do that. Um, and also, you could convert that into a different room if you wanted to, if you download the house. And yeah, so almost done the roofing here, as you can see. Pretty simple. I mean, it's not too much to it. It's just basically a hipped roof that goes around the third floor there. And yeah, so the, the center of the roof is flat, it's a flat roof, so that's why I said you could walk out onto the roof, or your sims could walk out onto the roof. I keep saying it like you yourself could do it. Um, but your sims could walk out onto the roof because that fourth floor, like that little room on the fourth floor, it does have a door that leads out to the roof, so. You know, you could do stuff on the roof too if you want, you can put stuff up there, I guess. Uh, right here I'm just struggling to get the roof on over this part here. It, it was a mess, but I got it in the end. And a little fence there across the top, and the last piece of roof coming in right here. It's pretty exciting. And adding in some roof trim, of course, which I do change the color of later. I do start off making it a brown color, then I change it to black. And right here, I'm moving the house around. Um, and yeah, so the lot in this world, or this lot I'm building it on, is the park in... What's the name? Um... Willow Creek, that's that's what I was thinking of. Uh, Willow Creek, so this is the park in Willow Creek, so I just kind of demolished that and put the residential lot there. So, there's no, I mean, I guess you could place this in a 50 by 50 lot, but, um, you know, you probably don't want to get rid of the park to place this. So, this, that means that because it's only a 50 by 50 lot, when the Sims 3 house is built on a 64 by 64, there's a lot less space on the lot, so, you know, The Sims 3 house had a garage, which you can't even build garages in The Sims 4. I mean, you can, but it's not real garage. 
and there was also a pool in the house in The Sims 3, neither of which are here, which is kind of sad because there wasn't much room because the pond takes up a huge amount of space. Uh, because the original house does have a pond, which actually has a bridge that goes over the pond to get to the house, which I couldn't do here. Well, I guess I could have. I kind of did it a little bit, but it's not like a real bridge. It's just kind of a little path that goes through the pond. You'll see it. Um, and you'll see the pond too. It does take a while to make the pond because it's really just a fountain. And yeah, so right here, I started off with this hideous um, dark gray siding and some dark bricks, which actually just looked really ugly. I didn't like it because the house in The Sims 3 kind of has this light gray shingles on the walls, and there's no shingles in The Sims 4, uh, so that's unfortunate. So I ended up changing that siding to a lighter gray because it was just ugly. And right now, I'm just putting in some more windows and doors, which is always good to have. So uh, some nice large windows for the kitchen, which I'm putting in right there. And also some huge windows for that indoor garden area thing. I don't know. And um, yeah, so right now, I'm just kind of looking over what I'm doing, putting in some more windows for the kitchen, some more doors. There's just a lot of doors and windows, and some more doors and more windows. Yep. Also, yeah, here I finally, I think I finally finished the roof here because I left that... Uh, for a while, there we go. Finally finished that roof and putting a bit of trim on there. And yeah, putting in some more windows. A lot of windows on this house, but you know, it's good to have some light come in. It's actually pretty dark inside despite all the windows, but you know, then again, that's what you'd expect. So there's a little garden kind of right outside the house. Um, it's not a garden, but I mean, it's like a little fenced in area that has a statue in it. Okay, right here, I'm putting in the pond, which is really just a fountain. And the way that you can make a pond in The Sims 4 is by putting a very funky shaped fountain in and then just, you know, putting a huge amount of rocks and plants and stuff around the edges to kind of make it look like it's a pond and not a fountain. So here we go, you can see I'm doing that now. Now, hopefully with The Sims 4 get together, they'll, like, they, there's a rumor, not a rumor, they confirmed that there's natural, natural pools. I say that in quotes because I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Like, what does really a natural pool mean? Like, it's just a pool that looks like a pond or is it really a pond? Or like, I'm not sure, like, do you make it with terrain tools or like with like or do you make it like it's a pool like where you click and drag i don't know i have no idea what the natural pools are like unless i just have not kept up with news because i really am not that excited for get together to be honest it's just not my kind of thing but you know I, i'm really looking forward to seasons like they they're gonna have to make a seasons expansion pack or at least a weather expansion pack or something because that's what i'm looking forward to not socializing and stuff that's just not my thing in the sims so, yeah, anyway, you can see here, I'm putting a colossal amount of plants around this pond here. So, you can see it's kind of looking like a pond. So, I mean, around the, I'm putting the plants around the fountain to make it look like a pond. Um, you know, it, it looks alright. The rocks help a lot, because you can see I scaled up a lot of rocks and stuff. And right now, it does look very bright and cheery, considering that the house is not supposed to look like that. So, I do darken it up a bit. I put um, some darker blue under the uh, water like the flooring of the pond or the fountain really is a darker color so it looks like the water's darker i put some darker terrain paint some trees it looks a lot better you know so it ends up looking really cool you'll see almost done here putting in some more rocks and more plants all over the place and it's honestly pretty convincing like it does look like a pond in the end so i was pretty happy with that there you go you can see it looks kind of like a pond uh right now i'm i do put some lily pads in there we go uh, they kind of help even more make it look like a pond and putting in some terrain paint, of course. You know, I mean, it's not as easy as it is to make a pond in The Sims 3, but it gets the job done. And that kind of space in between the two ponds there is supposed to be like the bridge. Um, it's not really a bridge, it's just kind of a space between two ponds, but, you know. Uh, there, this little dirt patch there is going to be that statue garden thing. And uh, putting some willow trees and some more trees and trees, basically, everywhere. Uh, you know, make it look nice and lush. And here we go, I'm changing the color of the house, finally, because it was very ugly. Um, so, oh, I, I actually tried putting trim on it, then I change it. Or not yet. Okay, never mind, that was off. I do apologize. Uh, do I do put in a hedge fence, uh, like the original house had. So, there's kind of like this little fenced in area in the front, and then one off to the side. Now, the one off to the side of the house has, um, in The Sims 3, has gravestones. But The Sims 4, I could not find gravestones. Even though there's ghosts in the game, I don't think... There's gravestones, so I might be wrong about that, but I looked it up online to see if I if there's gravestones, like, 
in the hidden objects menu or something, and I couldn't find anything. I don't know, I'm probably just missing something, but anyway, no gravestones. I ended up making it a garden, so you could plant stuff there if you want to, you know. It's a bit more, it's a bit nicer than having a graveyard next to your house, I guess. And also, The Sims 4 does not have dead trees, so I couldn't put any dead trees out the front like the one in The Sims 3 has. So it's a bit lusher, um, like, a bit lusher? I don't even think lusher is a word, sorry. Um, it's a bit more lush than the one in The Sims 3, probably a bit more cheerful. Um, here's this little garden area, which is in The Sims 3, um, and, you know, it's just a bunch of, I just put a bunch of ivy around it, and there's like little benches surrounding that, um, what's going to be a statue, so, you know, I thought it was kind of interesting. It's what's in The Sims 3, I don't really know what the purpose of it is, just besides looking interesting, so, you know, getting a statue in, um, trying to find the right one, got that one with the guy in a top hat, I don't know, thought it was interesting, putting some benches in, and, yeah. So, right now, I just kind of put a whole bunch of long grass in the front yard. I was trying to make it look like a little bit more swampy. I don't know, swampy is not the word I'm thinking of, but, you know, it's not like, so it's so bright and cheery because this house is not really bright and cheery. So, it was kind of like darkening up the grass with some longer, maybe slightly more overgrown grass. And here we go, finally changing the color of the house. You can see it looks much better with this lighter gray siding. And I also got a different foundation kind of a darker foundation, which you'll see I'm putting in right now. And I also get a nicer brick, which you can see I'm putting in now too. So it definitely looks a lot better with these colors. And yeah, so that's pretty much the final look at the house, although I do put in some columns on the corners to kind of make it look like there's some trim, which I'm doing right now. So you can see there that looks quite nice with the columns kind of trimming all the corners and stuff, because the trim in The Sims 4 is really annoying because it only puts it by room. But if two rooms are like too close together or for whatever reason, it just doesn't put the trim in some corners, which drives me nuts. So, um, columns are just a better solution in my opinion. And right now I'm putting in some of that kind of lattice work. It's not lattice work, I forget the name of it. Balustrade? Uh, I don't know if that's what it's called, but the stuff that goes in between the columns and the top, um, I put some of that in. And I'm also putting in a, um, some trim right now, as you can see, just around the edges, make it look quite nice. And yeah, so you can see here it looks very nice now, much better than it did before. And right now we're moving inside. So the interior is not that big considering the size of the house from outside. It's mainly because the house is so tall that it looks a lot bigger than it really is. And also because that huge room at the back that's pretty much not being used for anything. Um, yeah, so the living room and dining room are pretty large. So is the kitchen, but I mean those are the, pretty much the three main rooms on the first floor and that's pretty much it. So, you know, you'll see that. So right now, what am I doing here? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm putting on these little... Um, supports under that uh, little balcony, or yeah, balcony. It looks quite nice. Um, thought I added a nice detail. And right now, we're moving inside with the fireplace and putting in some uh, wallpaper, trying to find the right color. The issue was a lot of the rooms in The Sims 3, um, Goth Manor, had like this greenish wallpaper, but I discovered there's pretty much no green wallpapers with kind of that crown molding and wainscoting on them. So I had to settle with brown and blue to replace the green because there just was no green colors. I don't know, it's like the wallpaper colors really bother me because you get like that wallpaper I have right now with kind of the wood trim on it, like on the bottom part. It comes in like different patterns, like it's like five different patterns for it, but it only comes in like three or four colors, like yellow, blue, white, and brown or something, which is like so annoying. It's like, I don't know. Right, it comes in red too, but I mean like why is there no green or like some navy blue? or like beige, like there's no, there's not a very good variety of colors in wallpapers. At least that's my opinion anyway. Uh, right here you can see putting in some lush red furniture, the layout of the furniture in this room is pretty much the same as the one in The Sims 3, although all the furniture is different colors and it's all different obviously. And there's a lot more detail in this room than the one in The Sims 3. I mean, to be honest, the interior of The Sims 3 house was really ugly, it was actually quite horrible, which is why I did actually remodel that house. Um, I did remodel the Goth Manor Sims 3 house like two years ago now. So um, that was a while ago, but you can watch see that video on my channel. It's not that great because it's kind of old, but it's there somewhere. And um, yeah, so the interior is not exactly true to the real house. I mean, the, lay the layout of the furniture is the same, but the furniture itself is different. So right here you can see putting in some lush red curtains, um, which is quite elegant. And, and yeah, so that's pretty much the living room done uh, right here. I do the curtains last. And yeah, so pretty simple living room, um, not too over the top. The dining room is much darker. You can see here we have wood floors, wood walls, um, everything's wood. 
which I thought kind of suited the house, you know, I mean, it's definitely more um, gothic, I guess, um, that would be a good word to use, and, you know, big dining table, again, the red color scheme, it's kind of a similar color scheme to the interior of the Sims 4 goth house, which I forget what the name of it is, it's like Ophelia Villa, I think, I think that's the name, I don't even know why they didn't even put the word goth in it, I don't know, I don't know what Ophelia means, it's probably, I think it's just a name or something, I don't know, I probably sound really stupid right now. Anyway, um, I also put a buffet in here, so you could serve food there. Um, I did put a little plate of fruit, so, you know, you could eat that. I guess your sims can't eat that because it's just a decorative object, but anyway, in theory, if it was real life, you could eat that. Um, and putting in some side tables in the entrance and some plants and a nice mirror, or a couple mirrors there, and little rugs. Again, pretty much a similar layout to the Sims 3 Goth Manor, just nicer furnishings and a better design. So you can see here a little coat rack and shoes and some wall lights. Pretty simple, uh, looks quite nice. And now I think we're going to be moving on to the dining room, not the dining room, the kitchen, which does have a small dining area in it though. Uh, but yeah, here's the kitchen. Again, the real house I think had greenish walls. So this one I went with yellow because it was kind of the closest color. And you can see here I'm kind of putting in that sunken garden that's in this room for some reason, so, you know, um, I came back to that and finished that last, but for some reason I felt like doing that, um, was thinking, putting the sunken in part right now, so I don't know. Anyway, here's the kitchen coming together now. Again, the kitchen is the same layout as the one in The Sims 3, though I did make it look quite a bit nicer, so putting in uh, the appliances here, the, the wall and floor color does clash a bit, so I actually changed the kitchen half of the room to kind of this brownish tile, which looks quite nice actually, so you'll see that. I mean, there's right now a lot of yellow happening, obviously, so that changes um, in a moment. So right here, you can see pretty nice kitchen, uh, not too over the top, uh, putting in a little side table there, and putting in the dining table here. Again, it's just a two-seater table. There's also some bar stools, though, um, on some of those islands, so, you know, you could sit. your sims could sit there as well if they wanted to. Again, putting in a bunch of details here, stuff like that, um, you know, little boxes for some reason, and um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I'm going to change the wall color in a moment. Here we go. So I'm looking for some kind of tile backsplash, and I settle on that brown color. You can see, uh, not that one there, but that one there. So you can see it's a nice brown tile, which kind of lightened up the room a bit, and a little trash can there, and a little rug under the table, and it's pretty much the kitchen. Very simple, but it looks pretty nice. And now we're moving on to the um, ground floor bathroom, which is just a guest bath, really. I mean, it's pretty big, considering it's just a sink and toilet, but, you know, um, a little oversized. But I, th I feel like a lot of the rooms in the this house are kind of oversized, especially the master bedroom, which you'll see in a moment, um, is just way too big. So, you know, and like I feel like a lot of the rooms in The Sims 3 house were just really empty, and that kind of just drove me nuts. So I kind of had to find a bunch of furniture to kind of fill the space because, uh, I mean, especially the master bedroom. Like, if you look at The Sims 3 Goth Manor and you look at the master bedroom, you'll see it's pretty empty. Like, it's just a giant room. You can see um, in the top left, when I go to the second floor here, that's the master bedroom. Uh, so it's pretty big, pretty, pretty big, pretty big room. It's almost the size of the living room, so a bit oversized, I feel, but... Um, I wanted to keep it to the same proportions of the uh, Sims 3 version of this house, so that's why it's so big. And the, also, the master bathroom is quite huge as well. It's like three separate rooms in The Sims 3. I kind of made it two separate rooms and kind of put a partition wall for, for the toilet area, so you'll see that. Now, the master bedroom in The Sims 3 version, again, has this greenish wall color, which I had to settle with a brown for this room. I think I don't go with blue. Um, also, I have a lighter gray floor here, like the one in The Sims 3, and The Sims 3 has a four-poster bed, and I tried to recreate that with some columns, but it just did not work, so I ended up just going with a normal bed, and there we go, I changed the colors, so it's kind of like a red and kind of yellowy beige-ish color um, on the wall, it's like the red bed spread and like the yellow beige color on the wall. I mean, it's a pretty elegant room. Again, you can see it's a huge room. I put that couch at the end of the bed to make it look like, you know, the bed extended further out. Um, it kind of worked. So one annoying thing with this room is that the windows over um, on that wall where the bed are are not centered, like with the bed, which you'll see in a moment right now I'm facing the wrong side of the room. But 
the the room the windows there you can see are not centered and they actually are centered on the real house well, not the real I say the real house but I mean the Sims 3 version um, they're centered so I ended up moving everything over a bit uh, downstairs and upstairs to make them centered because I had kind of built it a little off so there we go the chimney was a bit too big and it was taking up too much space but I fixed it in the end and right here is putting in some details to make it look a bit nicer again the Sims 3 version did not have many details at all um, which is kind of disappointing well it wasn't disappointing but it's kind of bare so I kind of corrected that here what's interesting is the stairs to the attic is actually off of the master bedroom which is a little odd but it's just the way it is so that's what I did and this is the master bathroom here you can see it's very large and very huge so um, you know the, the tub has its own separate little room there as you can see kind of in that bay window part and we get a nice double sink and the toilet and shower are actually in that other partitioned little room. Now what's interesting to note is that the Sims 3 house does not have a shower in the master bathroom at all. So I put one in because I thought it would be nice to have. Because I don't know, I can't imagine not living with it. I mean, I, well, let me rephrase that. I can't imagine living without a shower. It's like, I mean, how, like, why? And I, one thing I noticed about a lot of the houses in the Sims 3 that came with the game was like, so few of them that came with the base game had showers in the bathrooms. It's like so many have just tubs and I have no idea why as I can't imagine living without a shower. And like even in the game, if you're playing the game, it takes ages for Sims to take a bath. So I don't know what they're thinking, but anyway, um, during that rant, I finished the master bathroom and now we're moving on to this small study room, which is kind of off the landing there. It would be nicer to have a full, full on study, but I guess it gets the job done. Also putting in some mirrors here in the landing. so. You can check how you look as you are there, as you walk past, I guess. And now we're moving on to this smaller bedroom here. I'm not sure um, all the family members of the Goth family, so uh, I don't know whose bedroom this is in particular, but it's a bedroom. It's red, like the Sims 3 version, and it's the same layout, which is kind of silly because the bed is like in the middle of the room. But, you know, added some details in here. Again, in the Sims 3, it's pretty much an empty room like with a bed and a dresser and that was pretty much it. So here I put in a bit more stuff. Um, there's some bookshelves, some posters, um, a little painting rug, some curtains, and yeah, pretty simple room. Again, very small, but again, it gets the job done. Putting in some details on the dresser there. And that's pretty much that bedroom finished. And now we're moving on to the other bedroom, which is the last one, which in The Sims 3, again, it's a greenish color on the wall. They love green colors in this house, don't they? And of course, The Sims 4 does not have green colored walls that are appropriate. So right here, I tried to go with this kind of greenish colored wall, but the colors were just too light. So I ended up changing it to blue, which you'll see uh, right there. So now blue and pretty nice bedroom. It has the balcony there, which you can see. And um, putting in some details, a little dresser. And yeah, and these two bedrooms here share a bathroom that's in between. So they kind of have a Jack and Jill bathroom there in between the two of them, and that bathroom is not accessible from the hallway, so it's just these two bedrooms share it. So, you know, I guess that's pretty nice. And again, pretty decent sized bathroom here. Maybe oversized, um, but you got the double sinks. The Sims 3 version did not have double sinks, but I thought if there's two bedrooms sharing this bathroom, you might want double sinks. So, put double sinks in, separate tub and shower, and some details, and you know, looks pretty nice putting in a little paper towel roll and some towels, and that's pretty much that done. So now we're moving on to the third floor, which is pretty much the um, attic. So you can see here, decent sized. Again, you could probably put stuff up here if you really wanted to use it as rooms in the house, but I kind of went for this bare look in it. Like there's unfinished drywall and kind of floor open, like unfinished floorboards, and you know, some bare bulb lighting, which there are no bare bulb lighting in The Sims 4, but I got as close as I could. And um, again, one issue with The Sims 4, there's very little like random clutter items that you could put up here. So I ended up just putting like a workbench there and I put some coolers up there. I don't know, it's just whatever I could find that would maybe look appropriate. So um, you can see here, I went with a lot of stuff from Outdoor Retreat because that pack came with kind of random items. Not really, but I mean, it came with items that look like they would be temporary and maybe stored in an attic. I don't know. Um, so you can see there's the coolers there and like a little side table, you know, and that kind of tarp on the floor for some reason. And that's pretty much that uh, for the attic. So right now I'm just finishing up with the roofing on the outside and changing the color of the roof trim to black. And yeah, so we're just going to add the finishing touches here. I'm putting in 
that uh, chimney top so it looks like the chimney is real and right now we're going to work on the landscaping final touch it touches um, so putting in some rose bushes and some ground plants and yeah pretty simple landscaping it's not too over the top there's a lot of pathways though so this area here in that fence where i just put that wavy path right here is a graveyard in the sims 3 but i couldn't find graves in the sims 4 so i put uh, some planting beds in there so your sims could plant stuff and right here putting in some longer grass and some little flowers and bushes around the place stuff like that and uh, you can see here about more pathways and this kind of large area here I put a fire pit because there is a fire pit in the uh, Sims 3 version so I put one of those in and kind of slimmed down that side uh, that um, kind of patio area and yeah putting in some terrain paint and yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out my channel. I have lots more videos there like this one, and there'll be some screenshots after this, so it'd be great if you check, uh, stick around to check out those. And yeah, so right here, just putting in some final touches, I'm going to finish off this kind of indoor, outdoor, weird room. So some plants in here, and some chairs, and um, some terrain paint. Also going to put in some outdoor lighting, of course, and also a mailbox and trash can. Those are always useful to have. And I'm putting in the outdoor lighting here just around the gates and stuff and some by the doors. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and adding the final touches here and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone!